Let's talk about Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Nancy, you reap what you sow. Pro-abortion activists protest, out, protest outside of ah. Speaker Nancy Pelosi's San Francisco mansion. Uh -huh. oh. Now, it wasn't the biggest crowd ever. It was like seven people, I guess. <laughs> so it's small, right? But but understand that's a, a very serious security issue. It is. It, it really, really is. Especially like, you know, I think it's wrong to do. I don't think people should be going to the homes of anybody. It's like we got to have areas that are sacred. But you know what, Nancy? She praised the protesters who were going that's out right. to the homes of the Supreme Court justices. Chuck Schumer, same thing. The president encouraged it. I love the, the Hill ran this piece that says Joe Biden encourages illegal protests in front of you know, justices' homes or whatever. And I'm just like, yo, the rule of law has broken down. But at the very least, you see something like this. You reap what you sow. Nancy Pelosi probably doesn't care, though, because you, you taxpayer, are paying her security bills. So she can advocate for it all day and night. People will then show up and she'll be like, see, I don't care. And then the money we spend funds the security to keep her safe when people show up at her house. I don't understand why these people are uh, at her house right now. Did she say something that pissed them off? Oh, oh I think they're, they're, she's supporting Henry Cuellar in uh, the district that represents Laredo, Texas, on the, right on the border. He is, uh. He's one of like the last like, pro-life Dems and – I'm sorry, anti-abortion. Pro-life Dem, whatever. <laughs> Um, and so uh, there, there's been on the progressive side of things, there's been a lot of people who have been upset at Pelosi saying, why are you supporting Henry Cuellar when you're trying to, you know, talk about the, preventing Roe v. Wade from being overturned? So I, 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 I didn't see this until until just now, but I'm going to assume that's part of the reason why, why I, is she I, I, th I think it might actually just be that there is no logical argument. There is just power. If it's good for the revolution, it's good. If it's bad for the revolution, it's bad. And Nancy Pelosi is in a seat of power and they would prefer one of their you know, political well, tribesmen or whatever to be in that seat of power. Well, I, I mean, I was just covering a, a, a pro-abortion protest in Los Angeles, and this was very far, far left people, not just mainstream Democrats. And, and they were pissed at Democrats. Uh, they, they, they don't view them as as technically on their side, you know, the far left. This was the Party for Socialism and Liberation. That was like the group that organized it. So, I mean, we, we see the, you know, the fringes, right? The fringes don't view the, main, the mainstream political parties as, as being different. They view them as one and the same. And uh, I'm going to plug the book here really quick. I talk about that in, <laughs> in the book when it comes to Antifa and some of the Chaz uh, occupiers dur during that time. But to, to bring it back, I, I think that's why, again, I don't know who, who was there and who organized that. But that could be just another thing, too, where they just view the... the Pelosi being part of the political establishment and the political establishment is all one and the same. I think there is going to be a reckoning of all reckonings in this country. We have this story from uh, Post Millennial that goes along with this. Glenn Youngkin slammed for lackluster response to protest outside SCOTUS Justice's home. Yeah, Glenn Youngkin said, we're going to do a security perimeter. And everyone's like, yo, 18 USC, blah, 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 whatever, says you can't demonstrate to try and influence a court or a judge or whatever. And they're doing it and they get away with it. And the media comes out and acts like, Egad, the far right has called for the arrest of people who've broken the law. <laughs> and they, 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 they got Will Chamberlain, Jack Posobiec, me, and a few other people in this Daily Beast fake news article where I'm just oh, like. Was it Patrizo? Did he write that? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. There was a dude from Occupy who, who tweeted at me and he was like, 10 years ago, you would have defended this peaceful oh, protest. And I was like, 10 years ago, I filmed people deflating police tires and said, if you do something in public, you get seen doing it. Like, you take responsibility for your actions. And that nonviolent civil disobedience results in you getting arrested. I've always maintained that position. It's like, it's so weird. The far left has gone so far left. They're like, Tim, you would have agreed with our more extreme position. What happened? And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. My position hasn't changed. You changed. You used to think we agreed because we did. And then you left and said, why don't you agree with me anymore? I think these people should be arrested. I think the police should walk up, take their hands very slowly, put them in cuffs, bring them into the in the police van or whatever, take them to the station. They get charged with their little misdemeanor, you know, protest charge. The judge says, don't let me catch you there again. They get a court supervision ruling, which means basically nothing. It means don't go back. And they made their point. They got press, but they got arrested.